we have worshipped the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, the man of war. Your mercy endure forever and ever. Oh, pray, be so. Amen. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, the man of war, your mercy and your forever. King of kings and Lord of lords, we worship you. Ancient of days, we worship you. We thank you especially for what you did last night. We thank you for what you are going to do again tonight. Glory be to your holy name. Please, once again, in the lives of all your children, Give us abundant evidence that the siege is over. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. And if you have any neighbor near you, wherever you are watching all over the world, turn to two or three of them and tell them, the siege is over.
And then you may please be seated. Again, I have good news for somebody. The Lord asked me to tell the fellow, it doesn't matter how you felt this morning, the siege is over. Tonight, we want to discuss the fact that the siege over your resources are over. My text will be from Galatians chapter 3. From verse 13 to 14, Galatians 3, from verse 13 to 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. When the city is besieged, the number one goal the number one goal of the enemy is to attack your resources because the people in the city cannot go out to farm or trade, they begin to eat whatever is left in the city until there's no food left. then they have to make a choice either to surrender or die and that's why i'm decreeing straight away that every attack on your resources will be destroyed tonight When people run out of money, they can do some unbelievable things. Some will steal, some will kill, some will, com will think of committing suicide. The target of the enemy, number one target, is your resources. So as to drive you into something you won't even dream you could do. And I want to say again, in the name that's above every other name, Whatever has been attacking your resources will be crushed tonight. Yeah. 
There are certain things I would love to share with you tonight. I will try and be as brief as possible so that we too can pray. And probably the most important point is that the God we serve is sovereign. Psalm 115 verse 3. Psalm 115 verse 3 says, Our God is in the heavens. He does as he pleases. The God I serve and I believe is the same God you serve. He's sovereign. He's the original majesty. He does whatever pleases him. He's higher than the highest. Stronger than the strongest. Above everyone else. No matter how high you think you are, he will tell you that heaven is his throne, the earth is his foot too. So no matter how high your throne, your throne is still under his feet. That's my father. I need to make this one clear so that by the time we finish you know that all those who think that you are going to die poor are in for a surprise you remember the story of those four boys that i told you long ago one the son of the president one the son of his doctor one the son of a witch doctor the herbalist <laughs> there in the palace and one the son of a messenger and you know children doesn't matter they play together and when boys are together talking, you can be sure they are discussing their father. The first one said, my father is the highest. The other said, why? So, ah, my father is the president. He's the number one man. The second one said, no, my father is higher than your father. Because my father is your doctor. He's your father's doctor. If he commands your father to stay in bed for one week, your father must obey. The third one said, my father is higher than all your fathers. They said, why? He said, because you know my father is, is your father's wish doctor. He can kill your fathers in their sleep without touching them. Then the fourth one said, my father is the highest of all. They all looked at him and they said, ah, we know your father. Your father is a messenger. He said, no, you don't know my father. He said, my father can not only kill, he can raise the dead. He said, I'm not talking of the father here. I'm talking of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the God I'm introducing you to tonight. Will you put your hands together for him? He 
does as he pleases. The only thing that matters to God is his pleasure. Like I told you yesterday in Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, Revelation 4, verse 11, he made all things for his pleasure, including you, including silver, including gold. He says so, Haggai chapter 2, verse 8, Haggai 2, verse 8, the silver is mine, gold is mine. So don't come and tell me you are rich. He will tell you I am richer than the richest. That what I gave you came from me. He owns the cattle upon a thousand hills. That's what he said. Everything he does is for his pleasure. Anything that does not please him, he doesn't allow. Now, that's good news. How is that good news? The Bible tells us that this God has pleasure in your prosperity. Your prosperity pleases God. And whatever pleases Him, He will do. So I'm decreeing, even on the basis of that alone, that you are going to prosper. As mighty as this God is, who can do anything he likes, a God who can't query, you can't sue him, you did not elect him, so he's not looking for re election. If you know how to approach him, take note of that. You can get anything you want from him. If you know how to approach him. The Bible says, Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. Daniel 11, verse 32. It says, they that do know their gods shall be strong and do exploits. If you know how to approach him, you can get whatever you want from him. The Bible says, as difficult as this may be to believe that you can even command him Isaiah chapter 45 verse 11 Isaiah 45 verse 11 made it clear he himself said so concerning the works of my hand command ye me So you can place a command on the all-sufficient God. You can say it with all boldness that from tonight onward, the word poverty will no longer be in my dictionary. (laughs) 
Ah. All you have to do is please him. How do I please him? Number one, have faith. You know, he told us yesterday, faith like that of a child. Hebrews 11 verse 6, Hebrews 11 verse 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. What does that mean? With faith, God is pleased. And he does whatever pleases him. With faith. He invites you into his club. The club of the Almighty. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark 9, verse 23. He says, if only you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Faith like that of a child. Will you believe then, like a child, that in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will no longer suffer poverty? Faith, like a child. I will remind you of, it, of that kind of faith. Rem you remember the story? Watch night service of a particular year. God said that there was someone in the crowd who was having problems paying his house rent that in the new year he will become a landlord <laughs> only one fellow a messenger in an office had enough faith to believe it was the only one who said amen the others were trying to imagine how can that be in Lagos. You know the story. New Year came. He went to the office. Saw the chairman of the company. Prostrated in our usual custom to greet him. That one looked at him and said, ah, messenger. Have I given you any Christmas present? He said, no, sir. Have I given you one for the new year? He said, no, sir. He said, well, the state government was selling some houses. I bid it for one. And I won. I don't need it. Come and collect the keys. You know the story. You know how he got to the house and found it to be a mansion. You know how he returned the following day and went to thank the chairman. And the chairman asked him, is there any furniture in the house? And the messenger said, no, sir. And the chairman said, I change my furniture every Christmas. I don't know where to put the one of last year yet. And he called the driver and said, load my furniture of last year and take it to this boy's house. Faith like that of a baby. You know that story. 
But I'm telling you to tell you that another of my children had that testimony. And it may be somewhere around. Not sure. Had that testimony. Had come to the Holy Ghost service with all his goods thrown out of the house into the street because he couldn't pay his house rent and said, the God who did that of that young man can do my own. By the following week, he sent me a picture of the lows in the street, another picture of a house somebody gave him. I decree to somebody listening to me now, before the new year, the siege over your resources are gone. Faith will please him. When he's pleased, he enables you through that faith to move mountains, including the mountain of poverty. Because he is sovereign, because he does what he likes and nobody can challenge him he said in Romans chapter 9 verse 15 to 18 Romans 9 15 to 18 he said I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy and compassion to whom I will show compassion and so the Bible says it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that shows mercy. The elders have a say. It's not how much you struggle that will determine how much you prosper. It's not if it is struggling that determines success, prosperity. There are some people at the dock, at the wharf, who carry one bag of cement on the right shoulder, another one on the left shoulder, from sunrise to sunset, and there's nothing to show for it. In the name of God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your years of walking like an elephant and eating like an ant is over. Yeah. And then said, if you know how to approach him, he said, I, I'm sorry, I decide who to show mercy to. Man, you can approach him and tell him, it is written, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. It means, if I show mercy, then, compulsorily, God, sovereign God, you must show mercy to me. How do I show mercy? You know the way. You know the Lord Jesus Christ. You know he's the solution to every problem. And yet you have relatives who are heading straight for hell. 
and you've done nothing to help them, nothing to bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Question then is, where is your mercy? Some years ago, two big rascals, national rascals, they, 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 they're so rascally, everybody knew them. I won't mention names. They met here at the Holy Ghost service. During break, one saw the other. I said, you? You are here? The other one said, yes. Ah. He said, for how long have you been coming? The other one said, I've been coming for almost six months. He turned to him and said, you are a merciless fellow. You discover the truth and you keep it away from me and yet we are supposed to be friends. Some of you have been born again now for three years. You have never brought a soul to the Almighty God. Where is your mercy? Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. How do I obtain mercy? Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13. It says if you confess your sin and forsake them, you will obtain mercy. You want to approach the supreme God, the sovereign God, on whose mercy your success depends, that you must confess your sins, you must forsake them. That's one way of getting God to do whatever you want him to do. Confess your sin to him. Forsake them. Don't plan, don't pretend to be a Christian. Don't claim that you are born again and continue in your sin. But that's not all. How do I please him? Because once I, once I can please him, the rest is easy. When the Lord Jesus Christ was teaching the disciples to pray, the first thing he said, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What's the next thing he said? Thy kingdom come. What do you do to please him? Make his kingdom assignment your priority. Jesus Christ said it in another way. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. How do I please him?
the work of his kingdom winning souls planting churches doing his work makes him pleased what Jesus was saying is stop running after money run after the work of God and money will begin to run after you do his work and leave the rest to him everything you can ever need he will supply now I, I, I pray that God has anointed your ears I pray that you are hearing what you are hearing Because if you are watching me very closely, <laughs> by now you must have observed that I wasn't even looking at my notes. You know why? What is coming out of my mouth now, now is not what I plan to say. What is coming now is a message for somebody. I'm not, I'm not looking at my notes. I have prepared my notes. I have prayed over the, over the notes. I was ready to say things that will make you jump and clap and shout. I got here. I opened my mouth. And I'm hearing what you are hearing. Let me hear somebody shout hallelujah. Nineteen seventy four. I prepared my PhD thesis. I submitted. And I traveled to Elisha for a crusade. I forgot about I I knew that I'm supposed when they by January they will call me to come and defend my thesis, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm supposed to be busy, see preparing for whatever question they may ask. I, I submitted. I went to do a crusade. My professor took my thesis to the external examiner himself instead of posting it. He bought his own ticket. He got to the external examiner and said, you have to read this thing now because I'm not going until you have read it. And it was Christmas period. The Senate examiner said, I will read it at my convenience. My professor said, your convenience will determine when I leave. Finally, they convinced the Senate examiner who read the thesis. And then turned to him and said, all right, I've read it. You can go back and give this boy his PhD. My professor said, no way. When is the date for the oral exam? Tell me when you are coming. The son examiner said, I have no questions for this boy. Go and give him his PhD. My professor said, no, we don't do it like that in our university. He said, well, you do it this time. My professor got back, informed the board, 
The boss said, you know the rules. He said, I know the rules, but this, this is what the man said. To cut a long story short, I was busy doing the work of God. God was busy doing my own. Do you know that there's someone here tonight that your case is going to be the first one? Your breakthrough is going to be the first of a kind? Your success is going to lay a record? Who am I talking to? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. I'm telling you what is coming out of my mouth. It's not in my notes. I became general overseer. At a time when the church was just put it plainly, very poor. The entire income of the church was less than my salary of one month, where I was coming from. We were struggling. And then, because I've served the government in one form or the other for some 27 years, I got my gratuity. It's a big sum of money compared to the situation then. And I was glad that with this at least I can manage till the church grows. And then all of a sudden I remembered I am no longer my own. I told you yesterday the reason we dance is to admit the ownership of God. And the Almighty God said to me, when I asked, what do I do with the money? I thought he would say, oh, pay your tithe and, uh, and then you can enjoy the rest. And he said to me, I'm happy you asked. Divide the money into three. I said, yes, Lord. Give one thought to this ministry. I said, yes, Lord. I was hoping he would ask me to keep the remaining two-thirds. He said, give this one thought to that ministry. My yes, Lord, was very low. And then he said, give the remaining one thought to this particular ministry. The yes, Lord, only me can hear it. Then he made a statement. I will be your source. He hasn't failed till now. I decree to somebody listening to me tonight, God will be your source. Well, thank you, Daddy. The best sermon is the one coming from you. No, Daddy, just whisper to me now. But there was something I omitted yesterday when I was talking about your hands being made for God. You know, in boxing, I told you I used to be a boxer. When you get into the ring and you are fighting your opponent, and suddenly you discover, ah, <laughs> this man is too strong for me. Oh. Don't let, I don't want him to kill me. You surrender. You know what you, what you do to tell him I'm surrendering? You raise your two hands. Now there's a rule in boxing. 
when the opponent surrenders by raising his two hands, the other man must not beat him again. If he lands a blow on you, after you have raised up your hands in surrender, he loses and you win. Daddy asked me to let you know, when you raise your hands in praise, you are saying, God, I surrender. If the devil dares touches you, God will finish that enemy. Raise your hand to the Most High God and shout hallelujah to him. When you surrender all to him, he will take care of anyone trying to batter your resources. When you focus on the work of the kingdom, when satisfying God is what you eat, what you drink, what you breathe, He will take care of you in a manner you can never, never dream possible. But then that brings us to one little point. You know that the devil knows the Bible. And he believes every bit of it, even if you don't believe. He knows that it is written as a partridge sits on an egg and hatch it not, so the someone who gets wealth, but not by rightful means, we die suddenly in the middle of his days and at the end be a fool. The devil knows that. So he will try to offer you prosperity through his own way. Quick money. Knowing fully well, you take the bait, you take money by stealing, you take money by corruption, you take money by fraud. You may make it, but you won't spend it. Oh, there are examples in the Bible. <laughs> you know Gehazi. Second King chapter 5, from beginning to the end, from verse 1 to the end, particularly from verse 20 to 27. Naaman came, Naaman was healed, Naaman came back with money. Elisha said, Thank you, keep your money. I don't want your leprosy. Freely have I been given, freely do I give. Satan said to Gehazi, <laughs> This is your opportunity, man. You can now be very, very rich. You know the story. He ran after Neman collected money. He never spent it. He became a leper. You know Judas Iscariot? 
The devil called him. All you need to do is point out Jesus Christ. You don't have to be the one who will kill him. And for that, 30 pieces of silver, he collected the money, but he never spent it. He hanged himself. Are you a child of God? Are you making money the crooked way? You can have it, but you won't spend it. It is the blessing of the Lord that maketh it rich and added no sorrows. And then, the devil who knows the Bible very well discovered that contrary to his expectation, revival is coming again. New churches are being built from <laughs> people like us in Africa. All of a sudden, we are beginning to do evangelism, mission work all over the world. And he decided, oh, I better do something about this. And he began to launch attack upon attack. For example, when coronavirus broke, the first place to be the first place to be attacked was the church. No more services, no more gathering together. If they don't gather together, they won't be able to give offerings, etc., etc. The work will stop. But the devil is a liar. The church is marching on. Eh? But then he has other plans, strategies. He knows very well. And you can check this one on Google that the Jews in America for, just for example they are 1.4% of the population of America 1.4% but if you gather the billionaires not millionaires gather together the billionaires in America 50% are Jews you know you can't deny that fact you can check it on Google he knows all over the world 900 people have been given Nobel Prize top most brains the Jews are just zero zero I mean zero point zero zero something percent of the whole world 20 percent of the 900 people with the top most brain they are Jews They obey certain rules of the Almighty God, including tithe, including first fruit. So all of a sudden, the devils began to say to the churches, you shouldn't pay your tithe. 
Why? Because it is the law. And the law was given to the Jews, not to the Christians. Oh? The law came through Moses. Abraham paid tithes long before Moses was born. Tithes had been there long, long, long before there was anything called Moses. Oh, but don't argue. Agree. Because he will go and tell you and you'll be amazed the kind of people he's using. Highly intelligent people. They tell you, don't bother. That's Old Testament, man. Tear away Old Testament from your Bible. Then I ask them the question. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Is that in the New Testament? No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. Is that in the book of Colossians? I shall be heard, I shall not be tamed. Is that in Philippians? And then when, when it notices that there are some of us who are not that stupid, he said, well, Jesus didn't say anything about uh, No, he said, Matthew 23, verse 23. Uh, okay. Well, whatever Jesus Christ said before he went to the cross, doesn't matter. It, as soon as he got to the cross and he said it is finished, everything in, he had said before up to the Old Testament, that's, fine, that's over, really. It was before he went to the cross that he said in my father's house, there are many mansions. I'm going to prepare a place for you. It was before he went to the crown, to the cross, that he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It is before he went to the cross that he said, You must be born again. And in any case, it is written, If you belong to Christ, you are of the seed of Abraham. And the blessings of Abraham are for you. I have had people say to me, Sir, the fact that the Jews are among the richest in the world is an accident. Just coincidental. I said, praise God. Almighty God, let that kind of accident happen to me. I decree to someone here tonight. A day is coming very soon when they are listing those who are the first hundred billionaires in the world. They will mention your name. Have faith in God. That will please him. If it's pleased, nothing else matters. Face his work. Do his own. And he will do your own. He said so. If you honor me, I will honor you.
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing will be added unto you. Today, in the name of the one who sent me to you, the siege over your resources are over. Well, the next thing now is to ask those of you who have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ to come forward and give your life to him. If you want to obtain mercy, you must confess your sins, you must forsake them, then you will obtain mercy. I'm going to count from 1 to 10. Before I say 10, if you want to give your life to Jesus, you come very quickly and come and stand before the altar. And those of you are in other viewing stations, go to the altar there as a sign that you want to surrender your life to Jesus. If you are at home and you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, you can just stand on your feet and show him that you mean business. I'm going to count from 1 to 10 and then we are going to pray. I'm counting now. 1. Now when you are clapping for Jesus, do it very well. Your hands are made to clap. Three. Four. Six. Seven. Eight. Those of you who are already on the, uh, in the front and those who are on the way, cry to the Almighty God now and say, Just have mercy on me, save my soul, I will serve you. Forgive my sins, Lord. I will do your will for the rest of my life. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands to them and pray to God for them. Ask the Almighty God to be merciful unto them, to forgive all their sins, save their souls, receive them into the family of God. Let's pray for them, brethren. Pray. Those of you all over the world, intercede for your new brothers and sisters. Pray that the one who saved your soul will save their own souls also. And if anyone is here on the way, well, you have to hurry up now because I'm about to pray for salvation. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father and my God, I want to thank you 
because you have proved yourself once again. You can lay your hands on an ass, and an ass will speak with the voice of man. Thank you for laying your hands on me this, morning, this, after, or this evening. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for speaking your word the way you want it spoken. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, this is your children have come to surrender their lives to you. Please receive them in Jesus' name. Amen. Save their souls. Amen. Forgive their sins. Amen. Let your blood wash away their sins. Amen. Receive them into the, into the mercy family of God. And Lord, from now on, any time they cry unto you, answer them by fire. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Well, those of you who have given your life to Jesus Christ, let me hear you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, if I can't hear you, at least God can. And the counselors who attend to those of you who are in the various viewing centers because I need to know your names, your address, and your prayer requests so that I can begin to pray for you. So when the counselors are finished with you, then you can join the rest of us in the prayers we'll be praying now. Now, the rest of us, how many of you are sure God is going to answer you tonight? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. You may want to write down your prayer points. Number one, you want to thank God for his mercies on you up to this moment. Thank him for his mercies upon you up till this moment. Number two, in praising him, remind him and say, Father, you had mercy on a blind beggar and he never begged again. Don't let me ever beg again. You had mercy on a blind beggar he never begged again. Please don't let me ever beg again. In worshiping him, number three, tell him I know that you are rich in mercy. Please have mercy on me. I know you are rich in mercy. Please have mercy on me. Number four. You say, Daddy, it is written, you have pleasure in the prosperity of your servants. You have pleasure in the prosperity of your servants. Fulfill your pleasure in my life. Let me prosper tremendously. Fulfill your pleasure 
in my life. Let me prosper tremendously. Number five. Say, Father, I am of the seed of Abraham. Please give me Abraham's blessings. I am of the seed of Abraham. Please give me Abraham's blessings. Number six. Say, Father, I will constantly honor you with my first fruits. Please make me your vessel unto honor. I will constantly honor you with my first fruit. Please make me your vessel unto honor. Number seven. Number seven. Say, Father, I will never rob you of your tithes again. the windows of heaven wide over me. I will never rob you of your tithes again. Open the windows of heaven wide over me. Number eight. Father, Help me to seek your kingdom first all the days of my life. And everything I need to succeed abundantly. Make available unto me. Help me to seek your kingdom first all the days of my life. And everything I need to succeed in life give to me abundantly. Number nine. Cry unto God to have mercy on your nation. God, please have mercy on my nation. Number 10. It's your own request. Your personal request again the altar is open if you want to come and seek his face at the altar you're welcome I will pray along with you for a while and then I release you to keep on talking to God Yes, sir. Before you leave this place tonight, the siege on your resources will be gone forever. Let's go ahead. Let's, be, let's begin by thanking Him for the mercy that has kept us thus far. The Bible says it is of the mercies of the Lord that we are not consumed. 
He has been renewing that mercy every day, every day. Thank him for his mercy. A mercy that he had been making available to us day by day all these years. Cry unto him. Thank him for the mercy. And remind him. I know you, Lord. You had mercy on a blind beggar. And he never begged again. Have mercy on me, Lord. Don't let me ever beg again. Tell him, I know you are rich in mercy. Oh Lord, out of the abundance of your mercy, pour mercy on me generously, generously. It is his pleasure that I prosper. That is your pleasure. You said so. That you have pleasure in the prosperity of your servants. Fulfill your pleasure, pleasure in my life. Fulfill your pleasure in my life. I am of the seed of Abraham. Give me the blessings of Abraham. I will constantly honor you, Lord, with my first fruit. Make me your vessel unto honor. I won't rob you of your tight again. Open the windows of heaven wide over me. Help me to seek first your kingdom. All the days of my life. And everything I need to succeed in life. Fall abundantly upon me. Oh Lord, have mercy on my nation. Have mercy. Of mercy. Of mercy. 